Hey there YouTube, Bronco Outdoors here. Today we have our very first viewer requested video. Special thanks to Pow for dropping this comment below on my tire cleaning video, asking how to change a tire on a Bronco. Hats off to you Pow for the great idea, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here today. We're gonna be taking a look at not only how to change a tire, but also how to check and replenish motor oil, transmission fluid, engine coolant, how to patch a tire, how to jump start a car. There's so much jam packed into this video, you definitely don't wanna miss it. So, without any further ado, Let's get started. Up first, we will start with how to change a tire. Now, this is going to be done on the Bronco, but majority of the steps should be the same for your vehicle. First thing we will wanna do is some preliminary steps, like assess the situation. Should this have to be done on a busy street or highway, we wanna be sure to use proper safety measures, like pulling over to a suitable flat level location, having the car in park, with the emergency brake engaged, and using road flares when necessary. Once we get that out of the way, we want to locate our jack and spare tire. In my case, these items are located under the trunk's floor. For your specific instructions and tips, it's always a good idea to check your vehicle's manual, which is typically in your glove box or some are available online. Next, we will want to ensure that we have blocked off all the wheels the best we can to ensure that the car will not move during the procedure. Next, take the jack and place it in the proper jacking location, check your manual, and begin jacking up the car. Once we have that done, we will want to take our tire iron, or in my case, the jack's crank handle, and begin removing the five lug nuts. Once the nuts are removed, we can remove the tire, and my recommendation is to carefully slide it under the vehicle if you are a little weary of the car falling. That way, in case we happen to be under the vehicle, the tire rim can assist in catching the car before it, well, crushes you. It's not a guarantee, but it's better than nothing. Then we can take our spare tire, place it back on, and put the lug nuts back, tightening in a star formation. Once we have tightened those all down nicely, we're all good to go. We can remove the tire from under the car, and begin lowering the car down. We can then remove any blocks and flares along with the jack, put our old tire in the trunk, and we're now able to make it home or to the nearest tire repair shop. Speaking about repairing a tire, that is a great segue into our next auto care tutorial, how to patch a tire with a leak. This one is definitely better suited for daytime and at home, but we can't plan the way life will go, so you will want to know what to do and how to do it when the time comes. First thing you'll want to do, if you haven't already, right after this video is head down to your local AutoZone or Auto Shop and pick up a tire plug kit. They're relatively inexpensive and they work extremely well. You may also want to pick up a bottle of tire slime while you're there, which would be a better use case for an emergency, say at night or on the highway. Be sure to check out my video on the top 5 items to have in your car at all times, where we will talk about this and much more. I'm going to be doing this on an old tire, but the process will be the same. Here you can see that I'm making a hole in the tire myself, just to help better suit your case while you will have an actual leak. First thing you'll want to do is follow any of those preliminary steps that we talked about earlier, and once you have done that, you'll want to clear the tire of the item causing the leak, if any. Then, insert the reamer tool into the puncture and slide it in and out to rough up the hole. Next, remove a plug and insert it into the eye of the needle. And then coat the whole plug with rubber cement. Then, insert the plug into the hole about two-thirds of the way in. Next, pull the needle straight out with a quick motion, then simply cut the extra plug off with the blade. These typically aren't included in the kit, so you may want to have one of these on hand as well. Now we will have a quick demonstration on how to inflate a tire to the recommended tire pressure. We can start by removing the tire air valve cap, attach the extension hose, 
and locate the recommended tire pressure, which is typically written on the tire walls. We will want to input that into our tire inflator, in this case 35 psi, and begin inflating the tire. Now we can use some soapy water to see if any bubbles form, indicating the tire patch has completely sealed the puncture. And congratulations, you have successfully patched your tire. Be sure to read your instructions with your kit to know how long you can drive on these plugs. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at how to check our oil and fluid levels. First up, we're going to be checking out our motor oil. To make this job a lot cleaner and not waste or pollute by spilling, I recommend heading over to your local AutoZone or Auto Shop and while getting your oil, pick up a funnel kit like the one I'm picking up here and maybe a rag or pair of gloves. It could also come in handy. First thing we want to do is make sure the car is off, in park, on a flat surface and that we're not wearing any loose clothing. Prop up the hood using the hood latch, typically located on the driver's side by the pedals. Open the hood and use the prop rod in the proper location to securely hold up the hood. Next, we'll want to locate our motor oil dipstick. For a full engine diagram of your vehicle, please refer to your car's owner's manual. Once we have located it, we'll want to pull it out, wipe it with a rag, and then reinsert it. Then pull it back out and observe the reading we get from the tip of the dipstick. You should see something along the lines of min and max, add in full, or holes to represent those markings. Then simply just see the level that the oil reached. Check your manual for your specifics. Next, locate the motor oil cap, and based off the reading we just got from the dipstick, we'll want to use one of our funnels to add the correct motor oil. Again, check your owner's manual, or sometimes it's written on the cap. Then repeat these steps until you pull a proper reading off the dipstick. Luckily for us, these are the exact same steps to check our transmission fluid level. The only difference is to make sure the car is on and warmed up before you pull and read your transmission fluid dipstick. In the Bronco, it's actually automatically monitored, and there's no way to check that level. However, I wanted to mention how to do it, just in case your vehicle does have a transmission fluid dipstick. On a side note, you will also want to inspect the color of the oil or fluid on the dipstick. If it pulls up a much darker color than what you put in, it could indicate that it may be time to get your oil or fluid changed. Next up is the engine coolant. For this one, we will want the car to be off and cooled down as much as possible, because this fluid can be scorching hot. The reservoir will typically be a large plastic container with two markings on the wall of the tank. We will simply want to make sure we have the correct coolant from the manual and add until we reach that top indicator, or whatever your manual states. Then, once you have done that, you have successfully checked the most common oils and fluids for your vehicle. Lastly, we'll be checking out how to jumpstart our car. Now, in the interest of time, one of my most popular videos is a review on Top Vision's car starter. In that video, it will take you through what the device comes with, how to use it, and how well the device works. But right now, I will quickly run through what we are doing in this clip from that video, and if you'd like further detail, be sure to click this YouTube card or the link in the video description. Here we are taking the car jump starter along with the jumper cables and hooking it up to the car's battery, following the correct polarity, positive to positive and negative to negative, or red to red and black to black. Check your manual for further instruction. Once we have that set, we can power on the device and crank the engine. The car will turn on thanks to the incredible performance from this device. I highly recommend you pick one up for yourself. And now we can disconnect the device from the jumper cables and the jumper cables themselves, and we're all good to go. Let's close up the hood and close out this video. There we have it folks, our general auto care video is complete. We made it, we're more prepared, and we're more confident on the road as drivers. Again, special thanks to Pow for giving us this video idea. I really enjoyed making this video for you guys. Be sure to drop in the comments below on this video and give us another idea to make a video on and I'll be sure to check it out. And while you're down there, please consider hitting like, subscribe, and ringing the bell so you don't miss a future upload. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great day and bye-bye.